The Moranjai water drillers have arrived to search for underground water. Pretty hit and miss to get water up there. Anthony plans to drill six bores in six days across the station. You don't know if you're going to get water until you drill that hole, eh? It was a bad start, getting dry bogged in thick sand. Look how bogged Anthony is. But then success at their first drill site. Come on, there's some water now. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good ball, that one. This morning, they're preparing to move on to the next drill site. But moving the travelling roadshow of two trucks, seven trailers, and over 200 tonnes of drilling gear is never easy. In the Northern Territory... 66 metres there at the moment. Most of our water we've hit around here has sort of been around that 20 to 30 metres. The water driller's second site has lots of dust but no water. No, nah, it doesn't look good at all. After a sweltering and disappointing drill, Anthony calls it off. It's a bit frustrating, but that's just the way it goes. It's on to drill site number three. Yes, I gotta get across the river. What stands between the drillers and site number three is a notorious river crossing. This hill has got us a few times now. Water springs up out of the ground going up the other side of the hill. Once you hit that with the drive, you just spin and get no traction. Yeah, we've been stuck there for about five hours once. The Calvert Hills Crossing. It was quite scary, crocodiles around everywhere, and Heath and my dog, and yeah, it was a bit scary. We'll um, see how we go today. To get his 60-ton rig up the other side, Anthony has to hit it at maximum speed. But near the top lies a truck-grabbing muddy patch. And there's another obstacle. An abandoned car taking up half the road. Yeah, the car down there, front end's half fallen out of it. A car wreck on one side and a mud trap on the other. Anthony guns it and hopes for the best. Jesus, look how fast he's going. With some advice for Hazy in the second truck. Yeah, I came 50 high split when I was along the flat at the bottom of it and then just fed it to it. Right, yeah. Next up is second driver Hazy in his three trailer, 75 ton road train. have any load or anything here to help pull us up. What are you going to do? Unhook yours? Oh, what do you think you're going to do? I've got to drag him up. Yeah, I know, but are you going to unhook yours or what? Yeah. Oh, there's people trying to come up. Oh, stiff f***ing shit. Anthony's feeling very emotional right now. I think he's going to unhook and reverse back. Stay here. There's cars coming. Stay here. Dude, I feel sorry for you right now. <laughs> In the worst possible place you can get stuck at the worst possible time. The only way out is by pulling Hazy's truck up. Putting an almighty strain on Anthony's 500 horsepower truck. Right, Hazy. Nothing's 
happening at the moment. This is the worst possible scenario. Anthony suspects Hazy's air brakes are playing up. You got your trail bike supplied now, or just sit in there and build, let your trails build back up. When air pressure drops, the brakes automatically lock on. To release them, Hazy needs to build the pressure back up by letting the truck idle for a couple of minutes. I'm just guarding the brakes on the truck at the moment, so if it starts rolling, it's pull my foot on the brake. After the drama, Anthony inspects the convoy for damage. What are you doing? Fixing something. A broken mud guard. Took massive chunks out of it. Bloody hell. Getting Hazy out is a huge relief. Time for Anthony to remind Danielle of the deal they have. The deal was if Danielle drove, there's a flat tie, she's got to change it. So we're going to have a walk around here. <laughs> Not there, all good. I didn't do that. Well, who did? That's... Not like that when we left. You must have done it try to pull him up. Uh -huh. Come up that hill. I didn't do that. Danielle reckons she didn't do it, but it wasn't like that this morning, so fair chances are she did it. Um, no, it'll be right around going a couple of K around the corner here. And we'll change it when we get around there. Oh, Danielle will change it. I should rephrase that. Anthony and I are total opposites. He's a country boy. All the guys I used to go for were city boys in suits and never get their hands dirty. Now I've got myself a real man. <laughs> Finally, the water drillers reach site number three in search of that elusive underground water table. But no water, just more dust. To make matters worse, they're losing light. They're only 20 metres down. Anthony is banking on water at 30 metres. So we'll just drill a bit more. While there's still a chance to strike liquid gold, Anthony's not stopping. Come on the water now. Yeah, I think it should be a good supply, but we'll drill a couple more rods and see what it's like then. In the vast top end of Australia, the Water Drillers Roadshow is on the move again. So we're on to ball number five. We've had two out of four so far. Hopefully this one's for the win. The 1.1 million acre Calvert Hill station lies in a remote and hostile area of Australia's tropical Northern Territory. And there's storm clouds on the horizon. The tiniest bit of rain could put us back weeks. It's not just rain that's troubling the water drillers. I'm thinking that Anthony's not liking this pad. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? I have no idea, that's why I'm asking. Does it asking. look like I'm picking sticks up so a truck can get around? Dan, Anthony's definitely in a foul mood today. It can be tough sometimes. We all have our good and our bad days. But yeah, we've got to make it work because this is our life. We'll see what happens. If it rains, it rains, it rains. But if you get stuck, you get stuck. There's nothing you can do about it. With number four borehole a failure, Anthony needs this one to be a success. Each cow on the property needs 11 litres of water a day to survive. That's 220,000 litres of water every 24 hours for the herd to prevail. But striking the underground water table is a hit and miss operation. We don't know until we have a go. We went to one place a couple of months ago. We tried eight spots and he's got nothing, so you know he's probably spent in excess of 100 grand. 
and still got nothing. Finally, success. Pretty happy. Probably got about four or five litres a second there. We'll um, case it now and then we'll test it. We've got a good flow happening there, so that's three out of five. Time to move on to the final drill site. To reach the location, they need to once again cross the notorious Calvert River. Oh, we're about 5k on the Calvert River crossing now. The crossing that two days ago, Hazy got his 75-ton rig stuck on. Yeah, so car's still that on the crossing. The added hazard of the abandoned car is still there. And we just creep down and then we'll creep up the other side as well. On either side of the crossing are steep inclines. All the weight's starting to push the truck. To avoid jackknifing his 60-ton rig, Anthony must crawl down one side. Truck's starting to skip there, so we're just using our trailer brakes a little bit, just to slow it down a bit. It's just a little bit of loose stuff there. We should be right here now. And struggle up the next. The lack of a run-up is a huge ask for Anthony's 500 horsepower engine. If any steeper or any looser, you'd have to break down and do one trail at a time. Now, it's Hazy's turn. No, not watching him this time. If he doesn't make it, he's on his own. Push me down that hill there. It's all good. So Hazy at the moment, he'd probably be about 75 tonne. Probably have another 15, 20 tonne than me at the moment. So um, he, he's got a lot more weight on his front trailer. Pulling 75 tonnes up and out will be Hazy's greatest challenge. Oh, no. That's wrong. Mate, you just want to break traction, mate. Go back up this concrete. Yeah, build up your brakes are probably dragging too. Mate, you're going to have to come and hook on, mate. I don't know, it just won't build up. One last option. Use Anthony's truck to push Hazy out of trouble. What are you doing, Dad? Oh, I've got to go and get my truck now, mate. Anthony is going to use all the might of his 60-ton, 500-horsepower rig to push Hazy's truck out. God, please don't get stuck. Rookie trucker Danielle's been given the job of steering the second truck. What you got to do is go and creep here when I say to. And release your brakes. I am not doing this. While Hazy hooks the two trucks up with the stiff bar. I've already got bad anxiety making me think about it. 
75 ton triple trailer is out. At their final drill site, it's the team's last chance to strike liquid gold. Hopefully, we get some water on this one too. Second, just talking to Will on two way, he was pretty happy with that. So that's four out of six. They've defied everything this hostile land has thrown at them, delivering one of life's true essentials. You know, water is sort of something you need. You can live without electricity, but you don't have water, you don't survive. Now it's time for this remarkable travelling roadshow to make the long journey home. In one of the toughest trucking jobs in the world, for the water drillers, one man is irreplaceable. We call him the boss too because he's pretty bossy. He can do anything. He can fix the truck if it breaks down, to drill a hole, to look after the baby and change nappies. You know, he can cook, he can clean. There's nothing he hasn't conquered, so he's a pretty amazing person. 